It's time, y'all. You ready? <laughs> Hi. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Oberlin, at least virtually. Um, my name is Brian. I use he, him, his. I'm a fourth year from Wellesley, Massachusetts. I'm studying visual art and psychology with Hispanic studies minor. Hi, y'all. I'm Monica. I like she, her. I'm originally from Shorewood, Wisconsin. I'm also a fourth year student. I'm studying geology and politics, um, and I've just added a minor in environmental studies, so woo, I accidentally had it, as, <laughs> as things go here when you have interdisciplinary interests. Um, yeah, and yeah, we're absolutely. so excited to be chatting with y'all today. Hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> um, Monica, I don't know about you, but I was a little bit nervous about kind of coming to college for the first time because I had never, um, I had never really left home before. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't necessarily know what type of community I was getting into. Um, and so when I decided to visit Oberlin, it was really amazing for me to see that not only when we come to our campus, are there a bunch of young students who are our age running around, but there are also so many kids who um, are preschoolers. We have um, older folks here. We have Kendall, which is an older folks home, which is just down the street. And so when you're walking into campus, it really is a larger town community rather than just the college. Um, Oberlin, the town and the school were founded in 1833, and when we were founded um, together, it was really nice to kind of see today how they've grown up like siblings, um, and it's been really amazing to kind of just experience it, even though we've only been here for around four years. I definitely feel really invested in the community. Um, do you have any fun stories about being? Oh, absolutely. As a politics major, I was so excited about local government. I got really into mm -hmm. it in high school. I wanted to continue that, and being in a small town is perfect for that because like we make up about 30% of the town community. And so it when it comes to like us having a voice and, and having interest, whether it's um, on issues or activism or government, there's so much involvement you can do. I um, served on actually city commissions in town for two terms, which was so much fun. Mm -hmm. um, I got to be on these yeah, committees with other, um, other residents. We would like propose things to city council and it was just, it was the best time ever. And it really is one of those places where you walk down the street and you're like waving at everybody, <laughs> whether or not they go to the school, the school or they're just living in town and you've gotten to know them through other means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another big part about Oberlin, the town is that we're so close to the city of Cleveland. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who may, may or may not know, so we're about 35 minutes um, southwest of Cleveland. And that means that we're really like, we really have it as a resource to us on campus. So if you miss the tall buildings, if that's where you're from, um, you can always take a ride into Cleveland. And one thing that we think is really important is to make sure that our first years understand Cleveland as both a fun place to go, but also a resource for community building and internships. Um, so one thing that we do that's super cool is during your first week at Oberlin, um, as a first as a first year incoming student, you're gonna go with your peer mentor and a cohort of other students to Cleveland through this program called Connect Cleveland. Mm -hmm. um, Brian's excited about it because it involves a lot of art museums, a lot of parks. It involves a cookie dough stand this year, oh. um, but it also involves a super exciting part of the morning where you get to go and actually meet the community partner. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so great because for me, in my first years, it was with their area of interest and that's how all of them are set up. So my first years were interested in health professions. They got to meet with this, these hospital professionals who talked about the history of their hospital and also what they're doing to kind of be into the future. And then we connected it back to internship opportunities too. So they were not only kind of learning about like having this like real world field experience that related to their first year seminar, but then they brought it back to like, now that, I, now that I'm part of this community, this Ohio community, like how can I get engaged with this hospital and, and use this community partner to learn more, which is just so exciting. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, as much as I love Cleveland too, I also really love our Oberlin students. Um, so here at Oberlin, we have around 2,900 students, right? And so we're a pretty large, small liberal arts school. Um, I definitely came from a smaller high school where sometimes you walk around and you're a little bit nervous that everyone's gonna know your drama. Um, and you feel like you can't really change and kind of become who you want to be in this four years, don't worry, we have a perfect amount of size, right? So 2,900 students, when you're constantly walking to class, you're seeing your friends walk through, you're waving hi. Um, but it's also big enough that you're constantly meeting new people every single year. Now this is also um, in part due to the fact that we have our conservatory. So we um, have around 600 of those students who are in the conservatory and around half of those students are in our dual degree program, around 200 of those students, sorry. Can't yeah. Okay. Um, and this double degree program is when you leave Oberlin within five years and you leave with the Bachelor of Arts um, from the college and a Bachelor of Music from the conservatory as well. And so it's really nice to constantly have people who maybe don't share the same interests that you do, but you can really bond and you get to learn so many more things. Um, I definitely grew up not knowing anything about music. Um, I now know what a flute is. Um, but yeah, good question. question. <laughs> so after talking to all these students and learning so much more about music and what really drives them has been something that's been exciting for me. 
Well, and I think for me too, I had grown up playing in an orchestra was a big part of my life, but it wasn't something that I saw myself continuing into college. Um, but then to be able to be in an environment where there are so many performances and so many ways to engage, just like a really deep musical culture on campus, mm -hmm. it's just, it's fantastic. And it's something that pulls everyone in, regardless if it's something that you participate in actively or you're just a concert goer, of which we have many concerts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And these really small, tight knit um, communities that we build here is really speaks true in the sense of our classes. So here at Oberlin, um, the majority of our classes have 20 or fewer students. And now this is really nice because our student faculty ratio is 11 to 1. And so it's really easy to get in contact with a professor, not only as somebody who's there to teach you, but someone who's there to really be adv your advisor. Uh, to really take you through college. Um, I know it's a little bit challenging for me sometimes when we come to college and we don't have our parents around us anymore. So to have these adult figures to really look after us and to be there, um, not only as yeah, someone who's here to teach, but someone who's there to care for you as well, has been a great time for me. Absolutely. And I think that that's really like exemplified through our first year seminar program. Mm -hmm. um, so what's super cool is as a first year, uh, you are automatically, hopefully going to enroll in a first year seminar. And these are offered in really interesting that they're offered in an area of interest, not a professor's area of study. So that means that they're taught in all sorts of cool subjects. Like there's <laughs> one on pirates, there's one on the River Nile. Mine was on Jane Austen and the media. We just read all of her canon, did a deep dive into what media looks like today and how it was influenced by her. Mm -hmm. um, it was a really fantastic opportunity because as you know from our intro, y'all are from all over the world and that's so amazing. And we believe that like, you all have really different backgrounds. And so it's cool to have a first year seminar to get everyone on the same page in terms of making you feel confident in discussions and writing papers and having that more close mentorship to make sure that you feel really great about your first sem first semester and, and that when you keep going you feel good about participating going on yeah um, yeah and i think a big part of that too can be like seminar classes and i think for me i just when i talk about classroom stuff at Oberlin, and I love to mention my, my, my favorite seminar ever because it just really shows the kind of environments that we have in our classrooms here. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called Action in the Anthropocene, which, as I mentioned, geology minor, or geology major, politics major, it's like a perfect <laughs> one. That's like, what does that mean? <laughs> um, and it, yeah, Anthropocene, so it's like this geologic era, but it was this politics class that was on political theory, and it was so interesting because it already is really interdisciplinary and then it combined the people who came to the class were all sorts of like complement majors environmental studies majors politics majors um dance majors it was just a blend of people and it was mm -hmm. so cool because i was the only geologist in that class so i had to explain what geography <laughs> was that was wild we all bring such different perspectives to the classroom and i think it was so fantastic to see that like mm -hmm. in our coursework we really want to create environments where we're bringing in folks from all over to really like have deep interesting discussions and i i think that that's really is a big part of the overall experience something that i think really runs through the things we'll talk about for the rest of this too yeah yeah awesome and one thing brian had mentioned um that I thought was really fantastic is the individualized attention that you get from your professors. And so at Oberlin, I like to think of our peer, our support systems as sort of like a triangle and that you have um, your advisor, of course, who's going to be in your area of interest. Uh -huh. um, generally, they're really experienced. They love advising first years and they really want to help you grow, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I know for me, my favorite advisor story is probably that um, in my second year, I was really looking into kind of like torn between my majors because they are different. There's not a lot of overlap there. Mm -hmm. And I was curious if I could combine them. My professor, my politics advisor was like, it really seems like even if you go in the politics path, a geology PhD is the best for you. And I was like, are you paid to tell me this? Like, I feel like you should be telling me to be a politics major and like just do politics stuff. But I think that shows that they really want what's best for you. Yeah. Um, and those relationships become incredibly close knit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and another big, so I, I mentioned advisors. The other part of it is going to be your PAL. So PAL stands for Peer Advising Leader. Um, they're the ones who take you to Connect Cleveland. I'm a PAL and it's my favorite job on campus because I get y'all the very first day of orientation when you're tired, a little stressed, maybe a little bit scared. Uh, we sit down together and we just get to know each other. And we're in a mm -hmm. cohort, which is really special experience because that cohort generally follows you through your first year seminar. And so you have the support of being with these folks during that whole first semester through your PAL experiences, your PAL classes, but also through six classes during your first semester where we talk about things like winter term and, and learning how to get involved in research and meeting your advisors and, and all of that. So we really help you walk you through your time here at Ogil and it's a really good support system. Um, and of course your RAs. Mm -hmm. I know Brian has a good RA story. Yeah, so <laughs> I love RAs. As I said before, it's a little bit challenging sometimes when you don't have your parents around. And so that when you're going back to your dorm room and you kind of just want to talk to somebody um, to unwind and get some advice from, your RA is great for that. Um, the RA application is actually really difficult and that's because we want to pick <laughs> the best students. 
to make sure that they care for you um, in the best way that they can. And so my freshman year, I got into a fight with my mom. It happens. Um, I was fighting with my mom and I was crying really loud. Um, and my we, RA, we've been there. We've been there. <laughs> um, but my RA was across the uh, across the hallway from me, and so from her room she could hear me crying, and she knew that I had a Monsters University hoodie, and so she thought that was my favorite movie. And so after I started, or I stopped crying later that night. She emailed me and she said, "Hey Brian, um, I'm actually going to be watching Monsters um, Monsters <laughs> University tonight, um, and I have a bunch of snacks and some tea. Do you want to come over and maybe we can um, chat for a little?" And it was really nice. So unbelievably sweet. That's so great. And so, yeah, so she never, she never asked like directly what happened. She just wanted to make sure that I was doing okay and was really there to support me. Um, so Sammy, if you're watching this, I miss you and thank you so much. <laughs> and I had, wow, that's such a good story. And I think ultimately what our goal is, is that all of our first years when they come onto campus, within that first week, you meet these three people. Right. And the great part about that is that as you go through that first week, which is intense, but also, you know, starting school is, is also intense. Mm -hmm. And it's great to know that you have this sort of multi pronged amount of support. So you always have people to go to. And of course, your peers are fantastic in there for you as well. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And so a big, I guess a big kind of thinking about this mentorship and, and transitioning, a big part of my like mentor relationships on campus was through research. Um, so research is super cool, and it's one of the ways that we see that you can get engaged more deeply with learning at Oberlin. One thing that I think is a hallmark of OBs, and, and you can corroborate this, is that we have yeah. a lot of questions. We're really curious, we're really nerdy, we love learning. And so research is it's so natural to the way that we operate as people. Um, and something that is kind of exemplifies that is that about two thirds of our students do research. And that can be research that, like for me, it's been in the sciences, it's been in geology, um, and it's been so much fun. Um, but also there's students who do research in the humanities, um, the social sciences, do theory research. I've had friends do research for the operas on campus, but also friends <laughs> do political theory research. So it's just, it's really all over the place. And that's so cool because people have so many questions. Yeah. Um, and for me, this has been a fantastic experience. I was able to write grants with my professors, um, travel with her abroad to Cuba, and then go back to Cuba later <sighs> that semester to present, so jealous. which was so cool. And it was really great because it was not only about like my experience learning, it was it's again, that multidisciplinary thing where it's like, I'm like, presenting in Spanish, so I'm having to, like, I had to buy a book to learn all these, like, geology words in Spanish. Um, <laughs> like, favorite, favorite word? Oh, my gosh. I can't. <laughs> Piedra is rock. There we go. That's a basic one for, uh, for our viewers. <laughs> but, but it was the experience of being, like, going abroad to do research is, is so, I feel so fortunate. And I've also gotten to go to conferences in Canada and New Zealand and do work here in Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so much fun because I was always really encouraged to explore my own questions. Um, when I was literally a first year in my lab, I read a paper that I read part of their methods and I was like this seems a little bit strange I'm mm -hmm. not entirely sure why they did it this way I don't I think this assumption isn't totally valid mm -hmm. and the professor was like that's a great point go answer that question do that and, and yeah. I, that's what I've been doing for the past three years is one of my projects that's amazing um, and so I just I love that so much because folks will often ask us as as senior fellows like do y'all do your own research? Do you ask your own questions? And the answer is absolutely yes. Um, and something that's really great about research is that you're asking your own questions, you're working with your professors, and ultimately there are no graduate students on campus. So a lot of the work you do is going to be directly with your professors and your mentors. Um, they want to write papers with you, you know, because you're their, you're their students. There's no grad student that would maybe be um, their first choice for a co-author. And so you really get to be on a lot of those papers. Um, and, and something those Oberlin faculty do pack a bunch punch with their resources. We've gotten over yeah. $5.25 million in NSF grants in the past couple of years. Um, so there's really like, and we also offer paid research opportunities. So there's, there's definitely a lot of, um, a lot of like financial support for that, which I think is also really fantastic. Mm -hmm. And around 60% of our students do research on campus at any point. So stories like Monica is not uncommon. Um, and it's really amazing that, yeah, we have this opportunity to not only follow our own passions, but we even can leave here with our names on papers. On papers. Yeah, and that looks really great post-grad, which is so <laughs> cool. And so, yeah, as we said before, we really love learning and kind of trying to figure out what interests us. One way that we do that is through our EXCO program. <laughs> so the EXCO program stands for the Experimental College. Um, so X, pedal. It's for Experimental College, and these are classes taught by students that you as a student can also take. Um, and you get maybe one or two credits for these classes. Um, a normal class is four credits. You can't major in EXCO. You can't major. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can't major in EXCO. How fun that would be, though. Um, you can't major in EXCO's, 
But what the program is designed for is we understand at Oberlin we can't offer every single subject under the sun. And so any place that you feel like you want to pursue and teach others about, that can be an exco. Um, so for example, we don't offer Korean at this college. And so if you want to learn how to speak Korean, we have students who are teaching a Korean exco, an American Sign Language exco. Um, so these are your more traditional academic courses. Uh, queer Women in Cinema is a really interesting mm -hmm. one. Uh, but also maybe you want to take a little quirky one. Maybe you want to take SpongeBob exco and you want to learn more about SpongeBob, Sandy Sock and monkey Patrick. Sewing. Sock monkey sewing. <laughs> tumbling. My, my roommate taught tumbling my second year. Tumbling. Okay. Tumbling. So get more athletic with it. Lots of dance excos. Mm -hmm. So much fun. So yeah, there's a huge range of all these different opportunities you can do. Um, and it not only strengthens kind of your individual learning, but your learning from your friends and your peers. And I think that's a real hallmark about our school is that we're not competing against one another. We're competing against ourselves to be better. And all of your friends around you are there to support you. Absolutely. Yeah, you say that just as I was. We have a take-home exam for my Interiors of the Earth class. and. Immediately after class, someone signed up a study guide to the entire class. They're like, let's work together. Let's study together. And I already got an invite to like go study on science. Oh, that's awesome. like, like that's just, yeah, the thing is that's people work together. And especially in the sciences, I think that that's really important because that's definitely, that's unique. And it's important that we're here to like support each other on those tough exams. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, it's so fun. I'm excited. <laughs> it's going to be a party. <laughs> we can make studying fun. It can happen. Absolutely. <laughs> it's always fun when it's a team, a team effort. And that's how a lot of like, I feel like a lot of lab assignments or group assignments really, really approach things as a group. And, and you also like hope other people are successful. I know I'm always like cheering for my friends in my co-op. We like get together, ask about what they're doing, we'll work on projects. I was just mm -hmm. helping my friends study for physics. It's just so, yeah, so positive. That's awesome. <laughs> and this collaborative nature doesn't end in the classroom. We also have an amazing program called SOAR, which I know you want to talk a little bit more about. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just excited about SOAR because I was just selected to be a SOAR leader for geology. Okay. Yay! Um, and what this means is basically um, you get, I think most schools offer you a ton of support your first year when you're kind of getting into it. Um, you're learning about what they have to offer. That, that support is really critical. But we also believe that your second year when you're declaring your major and you're sort of cementing your interest that you should continue, that support should continue. And so mm -hmm. one thing we do is offer this program called SOAR. Um, essentially the idea is it's going to be a two, it's a two-day program where you sit down with faculty, you sit down with peers that are upperclassmen and you say, what does it mean to be a geology major? Yeah. What classes should I be taking? But also how can I use these classes to complement my other interests and how can I dig deeper into things that I care about? Um, so make a five semester plan and we also just, our main goal is to make sure that folks are, know what path they're on. You know, it can, when you start a major, it can be easy to think that you want one thing but take classes in another and, and get a little bigger wires crossed mm -hmm. and so what we really want to do is help folks know what they have to access i know i'm making like currently a scholarships excel spreadsheet a fellowships excel spreadsheet an internships excel spreadsheet and then like also one of like alumni who want to be contacted in the department <laughs> um so i'm like preparing so much for them because i just really want my second years to succeed and they're going to and it's, yeah. it's just a really cool program and it's offered among so many of the majors so it's a really good way to continue being supportive and how many majors do we have here oh my gosh Close to 50. I think, yeah, that's what I was going to say. So we have close to 50 <laughs> majors here, but if there is a major that you're really passionate about that we currently don't offer, um, there is an uh, opportunity to create your own major as well. So if you're reading the list of close to 50 and you're like, oh, none of these kind of really interest me, don't it worry. It would be surprising. But, it would be surprising. But I respect, I respect your creativity and your unique interests. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. And another really cool way that we like continue to support you um, through your upper class members on campus is career communities. Um, so something that I think is really cool about this is that basically your career community is meant to not only give you some professional skills, but it's also meant to transfer over into giving you a really great awesome summer opportunity. So essentially how this works is you'll go through six classes during the semester. Um, I just finished my career community, so I can remember off the top of my head there is one about making the most of liberal arts experience. So as you've seen, we're really creative, we think differently, we approach classes differently, and, and some of those employers you need, like they need to understand how strongly that prepares you for postgrad because it really does prepare you super well. Yeah. And so it's like characterizing that we learn about how to conquer resumes, conquering cover letters, how to do a really great job interview. And they actually require us all to reach out to at least one alum who does something that we're interested in and do an informational interview with too, which was super cool. That's awesome. I emailed five people because I was scared no one would respond to me mm -hmm. and all of them responded. So I had a <laughs> lot of informational interviews kind of backfired and it was so friendly. Um, but it's a really great way to get you feeling really confident. And then over the summer, they give you a, a really nice chunk of change to go out and 
pursue an internship of your choice. So what's great is like for me in the nonprofit and public sector, a lot of those internships aren't paid super well or maybe are unpaid. And so it's great because you can pursue something that you really care about and maybe a city where you, you don't have um, a family or friends to house you. And mm-hmm. that can be really exciting um, and really just help you figure out what you want to do. That's what we're all about. Yep. Whether it's the research, through support programs, through career communities. There's so many ways to kind of figure that out and, and explore things at Oberlin. Mm-hmm. Um, and some examples of, well, actually I should say before we switch to the slide, this slide is a super cool picture of these six or five Oberlin students in front of uh, the Sony Pictures Studio sign. And this is, this is what we call affectionately Obi Wood. Um, and it's one of our career communities, the one that um, art and creative professions. They, they set up these internships for our students uh, in Hollywood, which is so exciting. They, I couldn't imagine that having a summer in LA to, <laughs> to work in Sony Pictures, like that's such an incredible opportunity. Oh, awesome. Brian, and, well, you, you're art, so you could do it. I'm, I, <laughs> I would be challenged, but that's okay. Challenges are good. Um, and, and if, yeah, and if Sony Picture Studios or, or, you know, the movie industry is not your thing, you can see that um, Obi's intern all over. Um, mm-hmm. One thing Brian says about this slide that I think is really, well, you should just say it, it's really insightful. Oh, I, so just, Right, we all come to Oberlin College. It's the same town, uh, it's the same community, but look at all the different places we're going. Look at all the different types of opportunities we're taking advantage of. Uh, We're not all the same type of person because look, we have people going to L'Oreal. Would they be the same person who's working at BBC America? Or Google. Or even Google, probably Probably not. (laughs) Um, And so as somebody, especially for us, because we're graduating this year, to see that there are so many successful places that our graduates end up, not only when they graduate, but also to find internships. Like we we were pretty well prepared. Um, So not only are we getting a great education, but also outside of um, the schooling that we get during our opportunities to really go and explore, we have these connections. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of my favorite stories about internships in general is just that um, I'm part of a, a really awesome scholar program in the politics department called the Cool Scholars Program, which you can look up online. Um, and one really cool part of it is the, that there's a summer experience that's attached to two semesters of seminar study when it comes in, in like the field of electoral politics. And so for me, I really wanted to go work on a campaign, but a lot of the people went to work in a consulting office. And the offices love our students so much that every year they're like, where's my Oberlin student? Like, you're sending me one this year, right? Like, we love OBs. And then the same thing happens in so many other offices that my, my congressional winter term, it's the same thing where they were like, oh, you're an Oberlin <laughs> student? Like, we're so excited to have you. Like, we've had such good experience in the past. And I think having students come before you that build this reputation for our school is really exciting because that means that, you know, people are excited to work with you and they trust that you have, you bring a lot to the table, which is exciting. Yeah. Um, I want to quickly feature um, one really amazing internship that, um, one of our friends, Antonia, actually ended up doing. Yeah. Um, so she went to Jordan and she actually got to look at all the different um, water sources. And so if you look at this image, um, it's showing not only the research that she was doing, but all the cool, amazing places that she could go. Um, did I say Jordan? I'm sorry. I meant, Jordan. I meant she studied abroad in Jordan. Yeah, she studied abroad in Jordan and she went to Philadelphia. <laughs> sorry, like, very huh. different. I was like, huh. <laughs> Um, but she got to learn so many new different types of skills, but also pursuing that's just something she was really interested in. Um, and so for her to really get to make that impact um, in Philadelphia um, was really great. And I'm super excited for her. So that was one internship that we really wanted to highlight as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it says that she learned, she learned GIS, which is a fantastic skill at geographic information systems, mapping. Mm-hmm. You know, I love that being a geologist, but it's, it's such a cool, cool way to like, build on what you're learning in class and then bring that back to different experiences in the classroom. And it just, yeah. And it's something that I think Oberlin really values and tries to set you up for. Mm-hmm. And this idea of kind of taking what we learned and what we're really excited about outside of Oberlin doesn't necessarily only happen um, for our internships, but also during our study away opportunities. Um, so both of us got to study abroad. Um, I was lucky enough to go to Sevilla, Spain, which was amazing. Um, and all of your financial aid package does carry from your time um, here at Oberlin to your study abroad opportunity as well. And so if you are interested, um, it will be feasible for you to go. Around 75% of our students do study abroad or study away at any given point in their um, time here at Oberlin. And so we really, not only as an institution, but as students, love this idea of really exploring new places, right? The world is becoming ever more so globalized and so that we have the opportunity to begin kind of really early. Um, I decided to go my junior year. I know you went abroad as well. Where'd you go? I also did. I was in Christchurch, New Zealand. And what was really cool about my program is that 
it was extra extended. So part of my, my like winter term project, which is our January term, which we'll talk about in a second, um, was, was to go out and do field work, which was so cool. So I spent six weeks where every day was like me, my waterproof field book, lots of sunscreen, because they have an ozone hole down there. So like <laughs> bird time is eight minutes. So eight lots of minutes? sunscreen, <laughs> my hat. Um, and it was so cool. I got to hike around every single day and do research. And then at the very end of it, I actually got to do my own project in this a really beautiful mountain valley where they filmed Narnia. So kind of fun, unrelated to Narnia. Did you see Mr. Tumnus? <laughs> <laughs> so unrelated to um, Narnia, but I did have to do a really cool research project. That was part of my, my sub semester abroad. So it was really cool for me too, because I was able to find a program. Having a double major in two majors that are a little bit different, I wanted to study in both of them while I was abroad, but I was able to, amongst the, I think we have like about 90 affiliated programs. Or yeah. Program, so many affiliated programs. And so having that many was fantastic because I was able to really pick one that was in my field that would cover like all the things I was interested in. Um, and it was a really great way to enrich what I like bring to the classroom this semester. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that when Brian mentions that financial accessibility is so important because ultimately Oberlin sees study away as something that is like, you know, like, like all these like internships and research, it's something that they really want to incentivize because it, it really enriches our classrooms. It makes us better learners. It helps us broaden our horizons. And so I think knowing that that's just a priority for us is really important to you all as prospective students because you know that that's the kind of things that we value on campus yeah. and that it gives us really cool opportunities. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know about you, but as much as I love studying abroad, sometimes it was a little bit challenging because you miss the community back at Oberlin, right? You yes. get so used to it. You get used to having your friends around you 24 um, seven. And so that's why I love this slide because we get to talk about the people we love so much. Absolutely. There's so much to highlight. I know that whenever I have my information sessions, I tell people this slide is like a little bit overwhelming because there's so many cool things going on. So I always encourage you all to focus on like the lower left hand corner to begin. Um, we talked about having the conservatory on campus and, and how music is a really strong part of our campus culture. And these three pictures at the bottom really do a good job of illustrating different dimensions of that. Yeah. So Brian talked about our EXCO program, and you can see in the far left corner, there's students triumphantly raising their arms above their head, um, <laughs> doing their steel pan drumming. And they're a group that is so well trained that they have you have to do the EXCO to even be considered for the the group. They're for the very, club, they're very, um, they're very, they're excellent. And so yeah. they actually toured in the South too during spring break. We have like a, a circuit of like alumni homes that they'll still camp in the backyard for, and then perform in like local community That's spaces. So cute. So cute. Um, if you prefer something more classical, next to it we have our oval and orchestra. Um, so many of my peer advisees are in the Oberlin Orchestra. They're very talented. I'm very impressed with them. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's another great, great way to participate in a way that's um, our orchestra, arts and sciences orchestra is independent of the conservatory. So ultimately as a college student, you're able to audition for and join any conservatory ensemble or class. Um, but often our conservatory is nationally and globally renowned. Um, and that mm -hmm. does mean that there's a, a level of intensity there that frankly, sometimes as a college student, it's like, I got to focus on my lab too, you know? Mm -hmm. So I really go ahead and do that is join our arts and sciences orchestra where you can participate, but also have that blend of like a little bit different pace. Um, and then also on the far right, there's my radio show, or the my radio show. <laughs> no, there's our, our, our on-campus radio station called WBC. You can tune in if you'd like at WBC.org. We have a live stream very fun um, and it's a great way to get involved with music I think the great thing about these three opportunities and and, and the radio station too is it doesn't really matter what you do on campus academically you always have the option to join things um, our students are so multi-interested and really creative and you, you might meet the most um, focused math major who still has like a radio show at 3 a.m. on Fridays, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where people like, we're really encouraged to like explore all sorts of interests. And I think that that, for me, like hosting a radio show has been a really cool thing to, to try something new. Mm -hmm. Some other things I really want to point out that I'm really excited about yeah. is we have um, operas here. These students are here ready to be opera singers. I can't even speak one language. They can sing in three. Yes. Um, and they can sing for three hours, which is amazing. And so you can go um, and just really experience and really enjoy things that even though you might not be able to do them, to see what your peers are doing is a great time to celebrate. Um, we also have a program called Art Rental. If you look at the pieces behind us, these are copies of um, art uh, that we have at the Allen Memorial Art Museum. So that's the um, art museum here on our college campus. It's one of the top five art museums on a college campus too, which is amazing and it's free for everybody. So I definitely recommend to come check it out if you can. Um, but what's really special about this museum is that it's home to our Art Rental Program. Yes. Which means um, you have to wait in line 
all night and for two times a year they let students run into the museum and grab a piece from their art rental collection yeah i should say we're not like grabbing them off the wall we're not They're grabbing like them off very the walls neatly laid out yes they make us walk but but emotionally i'm running Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> um, and so there's around 400 pieces of art that they give out every year. Um, and these aren't just um, artworks that we've found. These are really collected high-end art. So we have original pieces from Dali, Chagall, um, Picasso. Picasso. I was lucky enough I got a Picasso one year. What? Yeah, oh <laughs> just confusing. Um, and so this idea that we have this opportunity as undergraduate students to have world-renowned pieces that I will never be able to afford on my own for just five dollars for a semester is just really an amazing opportunity. And so it, it really struck me too how much trust like we've told you about a lot of resources that we have access to and I think that that level of like trust and in, in, in the students is really key to like how we operate on campus and I think it's really shown in Art Rental like Brian said in the whole history of the program it's been at least over 50 years nothing has ever been broken or stolen mm -hmm. or damaged which is bonkers <laughs> to me if you think about it, in dorm rooms for an entire semester like the things that Oakland students you know you know yeah so I think that's so impressive to me and I think this idea of trust too is really important when it comes to our student activities on campus. So we have, mm. of course, about 175 clubs and organizations. We have almost 500 concerts and performances per year. And a lot of this is really student initiated and student run. Mm. Um, this is really important to me because I think something I realized was really special about Oberlin is when it comes to making decisions about who's going to come on campus, um, what, yeah, what speakers we're having, what performers we're having, how we're booking um, different venues. We booked Lizzo last year and that was because the students <sighs> voted that Lizzo should come, and students picked that she should come, um, which is so cool. So very cool. <laughs> um, and, and it's just one of those things where like, it's the budgets are written by students, and it's really, really student driven. Uh, and a really cool example, I think, of that sort of like student power in action is our like multi-million dollar nonprofit on campus called OSCO, which is a student cooperative association, where we, it's an alternative housing and dining option where we run our own kitchens, we run our own dorms, and we're we're cleaning up after each other, we're taking care of each other, we're cooking. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got to inspect industrial kitchens for a year, which was so bonkers. <laughs> um, and it, what's great about that is it's just, yeah, it's so hands-on, it's very student run, and it's a mm -hmm. lot of fun. And you definitely feel like a lot of challenges, there's a lot of leadership opportunities and growth, um, and in really exciting context that's just really focused on student engagement and, and trusting us to, to lead things and to make things happen. And, and such cool things happen when we have that power, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, and just really quickly, um, I really also want to talk about our athletics here on campus. Um, so this isn't necessarily a club. These are varsity sports. We have 21 plus varsity sports here. Um, as somebody who didn't necessarily grow up playing sports, I still can't kick a ball. Um, it's been amazing to go to every single game and to see um, friends supporting one another. I've gone really into women's volleyball recently. I know a bunch of people on the team. Um, and so you really can go and celebrate um, not only are they amazing students, but they're also amazing athletes as well. Definitely. Um, and I think a really cool way to engage with athletics and, and sort of the athletic scene, but in a little bit more, for me, I was, I was a recruited athlete and then I fell in love with research. <laughs> this is a little known fact about me. And I was like, I'm so sorry, but I really got to do science. I really want to do science. But, but part of that was I still like going to the gym. It's a lot of fun for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I miss having my team. And so something that I've really enjoyed is we have these awesome classes called GeoFit classes, mm -hmm. um, where we have about, I think it was probably almost like about 20 a week and all sorts of different stuff. Yeah. I, my favorite is a body positive, high intensity interval training slash Pilates class, which is so fun. It's like one of the most positive environments ever. And what's really fun about them is like when it comes to athletics and staying fit and being active, it's something that the whole community does. Um, so much like how you, when you go to the coffee shop here, you'll see your professors and your peers and maybe um, the kids that you like mentor in the elementary schools. Um, when you go to yoga fit classes, I do them next to my professor and my classmates <laughs> in the class. So we all, we all shower off and then we get right back into mapping. It's so yeah. much fun. Um, and it really shows that, like the tightness of our community and the way that we interact. I think it's so fantastic. Mm -hmm. We also have a lot of club sports here yes. as well. Um, if you are interested in Ultimate Frisbee, um, they're an amazing team. We also, our women and trans team, the Praying Manti, actually just won their nationals. And so they won free shorts, let's say winner on them. So if you want free clothes, you can join them. <laughs> uh, we also have a Quidditch team, um, club bowling. We have a bowling alley here on campus. And so there's so many ways to get involved with athletics without necessarily being a varsity athlete, if that's not what you're interested in. Definitely. Lots of flexibility. And I think much like um, 
much like with club sports, much like clubs, it's kind of the thing where if you have friends and you want to try something out, you could do that together. My, my roommate just got recruited for club soccer and she was like, oh, that's so she's like, I was just hanging out with my friend and he's like, come along. And now she's on a team. So it's just the, the kind of thing where students just get involved in it. So it's really the kind of thing where you can pick your own level. Um, and mm-hmm. I think the most important thing to just cement for y'all is that we love our athletes, but all, also good to remember all of our athletes are student athletes. They're D3 athletes. And so they're here for Oberlin and they also like doing athletics. Um, so that's great because it means that everyone on campus loves being a student. And I think that that's really, really important when it comes to having an awesome campus community. Yeah. And this idea of kind of picking your own level of involvement too also spans into our love for music. Um, and so here at Overland, we have secondary lessons. If you still want to participate in the music scene, if you want to work on your own instrument without um, necessarily joining the conservatory. So these are classes that you can take for around $8 per half an hour. Um, and you have to audition and then you get paired with a student who's majoring in your instrument. And so if you maybe play the cello and want to keep on working on the cello, but you don't necessarily want to join the orchestra or the conservatory, to have these secondary lessons to work from students who are pre-professionals, who have so many skills to share with you, is a great opportunity. And so I definitely recommend that you um, look into that if that's something that you're excited about as well. And what's cool about the conservatory is that I I think much like how going like finding a college major there, there's so much so much variety than you than you had experience like, offered it to you in high school with the or conservatory is the same like i loved playing violin in high school and i thought about doing, taking baroque violin lessons <laughs> or you can learn like gamelan drums and there's so many other instruments that you might not have known about and so what's really cool about the i think it's like maybe even bagpipes too right like there's the recorder i know somebody mm, here is majoring the recorder, the recorder. <laughs> So, but the idea here is that there's so many ways to really explore new new perspectives. I think a really cool feature too is our Tomorrow program, which just stands for Technology, Music, and Related Arts, um, which it took me so long to understand what it is, and I think even now I'm still a little bit confused. But they basically play with sound and and music in really really interesting ways. And often there's a lot of computer science majors or math majors or physics majors who like thinking about sound as more on a conceptual level, who also do Tomorrow, mm-hmm. um, and it's really great. We had just had our last weekend our first um, the Tomorrow 50th reunion Kaleidoscope music festival. I don't know if you went, Brian. I did. It was, so good. was it three and a half hours long or four mm-hmm. and a half hours three long? Three and a half. Yeah. So it's like, like three and a half hours of straight performances by Oberlin faculty and students in this department, which was and, and across the college. It was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think just really showed off the amount of creativity that we have on campus to be able to go to something that was that long and that prolific and that amazing. Yeah. It was such an amazing, amazing concert. And so many of our students are really creative and sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to find an outlet or to find really time to express that. And so what I love is that Oberlin offers us this period called the winter term to really just explore what we're interested in. So Oberlin does run on a semester schedule. So we have a 414 plan. That means four classes in the fall, four classes in the spring, and we meet in the middle uh, for this January um, session. So it's the entire month of January that Oberlin gives us off to pursue our passions. Now you have to do three winter terms out of your four years here on campus, which means it is a graduation requirement. And that just shows that Oberlin realizes how important this is and they want us to take these opportunities. Um, And so as we said before, we both had a really amazing time studying abroad. Um, Maybe you are a student athlete who um, doesn't have the time uh, to go abroad during the normal semesters. Winter term is a great opportunity to do that as well. Um, Maybe you want to find a new career or explore different career options for you. Um, You can go and find an internship at this period. I know somebody who wanted to become a dentist and so she worked at a dentist's office um, and she really loved it. But let's say you realized you hated teeth after that month. (laughs) Now you have the whole summer to really just pursue whatever else you might be interested in. Um, Maybe you are like me who wanted to learn how to bake bread on a personal project. So I baked 47 loaves of bread uh, for the entire month of January. Inspired by the Great British Inspired by the Great British Baking Show. Important to mention. And my advisor also loved that show, but she's a biologist. And so what she would do is every time one of my bakes did not go as well, no soggy bottoms yet. Um, That's a a reference. That's a a reference. reference. That is a reference. (laughs) Um, She actually ended up sending me, because she was a biologist, all of the chemistry behind um, everything that had went wrong. So I would say maybe um, it was a little bit too cold today um, and the yeast didn't um, puff up as much as I had wanted to. She ended up yeah, telling me so what cool. was going wrong. Maybe the yeast wasn't warm enough in all these different <laughs> opportunities. 
And so that was amazing. And then also you can use this time to give back to the community. Um, maybe you could be like my friend Devin who decided to stay in Oberlin and work at their food pantry um, and make sure that she kind of gave back to the community all that love that they had given her. And so winter terms is a really amazing time to explore your own personal passions, but also to see maybe where you want to end up after Oberlin as well. Definitely. That was a great transition to thinking about what comes next. I know that you all are probably, you're thinking about what comes next, you're thinking about college, um, and, but it's also important to think a little bit about what comes after, and Brian and I are doing a lot of thinking about what comes after right now oh. as graduating seniors. <laughs> <laughs> we won't acknowledge it too much, but I think a really cool thing is that Oberlin, it's I was really confident going into Oberlin knowing that the resources that I would be able to access would prepare me for what lied, what, what lay beyond Oberlin. Mm -hmm. um, and this slide does a great job of showing a couple of our main stats. I think one thing that we've tried to emphasize is that Oberlin students are really creative and they love learning. Um, so it really comes as no surprise that Oberlin produces more PhDs than any other predominantly undergraduate institution, um, which is so fantastic. I think it really shows that we, we just, we love answering those questions and asking those questions and going deeper. Um, and I think another thing that's really cool is that uh, about, apparently about over 80% of our qualified applicants are accepted to med school. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely had friends who were thinking about medical professions who wanted to go to a small liberal arts school who felt really confident going here, knowing that they get really good advising and really good professors who care about the chemistry of baking, yeah. but also know how to prepare them well for a career in the medical professions. Um, mm -hmm. And lastly, one thing that I was really interested in is I was always the kid who was really excited about scholarships and fellowships. That's just kind of who I am. I'm sure if there are some of you out there, you're like, yep, that's me. <laughs> if that's your if that's your vibe, um, we are really, really big on supporting our students through scholarship and fellowship applications. I was, we are currently the one of the top producers of Fulbright's uh, and Truman's and also Watson's. The Truman Scholarship is one that's offered your junior year and I had was fortunate enough to apply last year. Um, and when I was selected to be a finalist, Part of that is uh, applying uh, or having an interview um, after application where to go fly and fly back to the US from New Zealand. Thank you, Oberlin, for getting me there. <laughs> um, but a big part of that too is preparing for the interview. And I just remember that I had gotten a lot of sample questions from our advisor and I'd gotten talked to some alumni about it. Um, but ultimately, he really wanted me to do a practice interview. And so I Skype him in. I wake up really early in the morning so that it's like a normal time for Oberlin professors. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, it's just a panel. Don't worry about it. It's a small panel. And I, I opened up my laptop and there's like 12 professors arranged in a view. And I just could not believe that all of them took that time to like Skype me, who is like 6,000 miles away, <laughs> um, just to help support me through this. And they were all like, it's a really, it's a really intense interview. So they were all really serious and trying really hard to grill me and like asking really fast questions, and really be on top of it. Uh, but it's funny that my advisor broke and she just started laughing and she's like, it's so good to see you. And it was oh. so sweet. And it just made me think like, ah, oh, like what, what's, what amazing school am I at that these people like are so invested in me that they're calling me and, and spending an hour really, like, really grilling me for this. And that, that like, you know, they want to connect with me. That was, that was such a special moment. And it made me really realize that, Oberlin professors will care about you while you're here, but they also really care about what comes next for you and they really want you to do well. Yeah. And that was like, that was so heartening. It was a really great experience. That's awesome. <laughs> Me like at end of, end of the call in my dorm in New Zealand, like, wow, like that was like, the best <laughs> thing ever. Also, because it was really intense. I was just like, releasing from that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. And thinking about um, where you end up going after Oberlin professors support you. Some of our first destinations that we have, if, if you all were in the room with us, I think you raise your hand and tell me if you recognize any of these companies. Um, but there's there comes, up, again, such a variety of different backgrounds. Um, you see here that about Google is on here, about four computer science grads got jobs at Google last year, and that's something that happens regularly. They definitely keep an eye on our grads, which is super cool, and that happens across a lot of different of, of these businesses. I know for me in geology, um, a lot of our grads will go on to really cool careers in consulting in the National Park Service. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my best friends from my lab just got a job, education job at Death Valley, which is great. He got the winter shift, not the summer shift, so <laughs> he scored. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have any? Sorry. No, I said I can't even imagine what that would have been oh like during the summer. <laughs> we won't have to worry about it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I let's see. And there's I'm trying to think of other amazing stuff. Oh, one of our again, one of our friends, Devin, who works in admissions. Um, her partner just got a job at the Federal Reserve Bank, which is fantastic in Cleveland, right out of uh, right out of undergrad from the economics department, which was really cool. And he actually found that job after an internship that he had during winter term as well. And so it's really cool wow. to see kind of that become true of all the work that you put in for winter term, um, kind of. Yeah, pan out for you as well for your careers. Absolutely. Um, and now just to quickly end, um, I just want to talk about why we loved Oberlin 
Um, and so we've just talked about what for 45 minutes now, how much <laughs> we love Oberlin, but we didn't necessarily know that we would love it so much before coming here. Um, and so um, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about your experience, but for me, I didn't know where I wanted to go. I'm from the Northeast area and there's so many good small liberal arts schools. Uh, but as I was going to them, all of them started to blend in my mind. They all kind of really felt similar to me. But when I applied to Oberlin, I found out my response. Oberlin was the only school that hand wrote me a letter. Um, and it said, Dear Brian, we loved your art. We can't wait for you to be in Obi. Um, and for me, that was really sweet to not only come to a school that loved and supported you for who you were at that moment, but kind of could see who you could become um, in just four years and as an adult uh, was really a nice change and I don't know about you guys but when I was filming out the common application I I don't know it was a little dehumanizing for me so to really see a school that saw you holistically and saw you as a person um, was really life-changing and I'm so happy I made the choice. Gosh, why Oberlin? It's just so sweet. Um, yeah for me it was a decision that was there were a lot of components I think definitely also financial which I think is very real and I think it's important to mention because I'm sure that's something y'all are considering um, mm -hmm. but for me what really made it for me was that Ultimately, I ended up, I, I visited a couple times. Uh, I knew of Oberlin because these two students from my high school who I adored uh, were both older than me ended up coming here. And I just thought, yeah, if Joey and Emily are going to Oberlin, something must be good about this school. These two people, I admire them so much and they're so talented and so interesting and creative and, and people that I wanted to be around. And so I said, mm, I gotta check this out. I sat down one night with all these other students who were staying overnight in the same dorm I was. And we had this super long conversation. I think we, we talked for like four hours about all sorts of different stuff. And people were just so engaged and critical and interesting and had really cool values and stories. And it made me realize being from Wisconsin, I, I don't live in, I live in a city. It's important to mention people from Wisconsin do live in cities, but it was, it, 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 people are still like have very limited amount of experiences. And so to get to talk to kids yeah. who like regularly ran into celebrities, I was <laughs> so foreign to me. And it made me realize that being in an environment where people had really different experiences was such, it's like such a strength. And that's something that I really wanted to like continue. Um, experiencing, so that's why I wanted to become an OB.